Hi everyone, my name is Sherry Jablonski and I am the owner and personal trainer at Better Way Fitness LLC and I have a setup to show you a very easy dinner slash lunch whatever of panko baked chicken with a honey sriracha sauce. Before I get going, I do have to read the following and it says attention active members to earn credit toward LMHF wellness program part two. You must watch this video in its entirety and email Mia Vaccaro at mia.vaccaro at lmhf.net to receive your wellness credit. And that's M-E-A-H dot V-I-C-A-R-I-O at lmhf.net. So now that we got the housekeeping out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to bake some panko crusted chicken. This is so easy and it's so crispy, it's absolutely amazing. So what I have here are just some boneless skinless chicken breasts and I've been marinating them for about an hour, not too long, in a little bit of soy sauce, some minced ginger and minced garlic. Now, when I say minced ginger and minced garlic, what I mean are these things. Here's the garlic and this is a squeezable ginger. So doing it fresh and grating your own ginger and mincing your own garlic, that's kind of something like Thanksgiving or Christmas, <laughs> but every day during the week, it's just too much. So that's what I use. Um, it's super easy. I got those at Walmart, very simple. So what you're gonna do is after you've marinated your chicken, you're gonna take it out and I line this all up. The first thing you're gonna do is put it in, this is just an egg wash, just some eggs beaten. And then I've got some panko breadcrumbs over here. We're gonna put it in both of those. And then I'm gonna put it on my parchment lined baking sheet. My oven is preheated right now to 400. So I'm going to take these out and you can do as much or as little chicken as you want. This particular meal is um, just for two. Um, although so this is something that my kids um, who are 13, 16, and 17, the 13 and 16 year old are boys, very picky, and they love this. Um, they, they do not like the sauce that I'm going to make because it does have soy and sriracha in it, um, but they use their own sauce. My 16 year old dumps barbecue sauce all over it. We use the actual sriracha sauce. So you just kind of take the chicken and then I try to pull the parchment paper as close as I can, just to avoid everything everywhere. So just take your time, it's just one on each side, just one wash with the egg, let it drip a little bit, and then I just put it right in the panko. And I just use my tongs to kind of scoop the panko around to get an extra good coating. So I really, I like a lot of crunch. And since we're not frying this, the more panko you have on there, the crispier it gets. And I'm telling you, the first time I made this, I was very skeptical um, that it would get crunchy at all, but it really, really does. So I've got one last piece of chicken. Now I opted to use thicker chicken breast. You can use chicken tenders. You can use um, a combination. I've never done this recipe with bone in chicken. So I honestly don't know how that would go. I'm assuming it would just affect uh, your cooking times. So if anybody does that, uh, please let me know. I would love um, to hear about that. Um, the best way to reach me is sherryjablonski at gmail.com. And I'll mention that again at the end. But if you do any additions, I find that the best recipes are ones that you can kind of play with. And I didn't always feel that way, but when I got married uh, about nine years ago, I went from a family of me to a family of a husband and three stepkids. So um, the actual feeding of people <laughs> had to step up. So I'm learning, I'm still in my journey, I'm still in my process, but we eat a lot less frozen pizza and macaroni and cheese than we used to. So I'm learning and trying to get healthier as we go. So I've got the chicken on here now. Sometimes what I do is I take a spoon and I take some of these extra breadcrumbs and just kind of sprinkle it on top of 
the chicken breast just to get a little extra. And one extra little tip that I find makes things really crunchy is I just take some olive oil spray, no calories, so it stays very healthy. And I just do a little, just a little spritzeroo um, to get just a little more crisp on there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take this and I've got my oven that's preheated to 400. I'm gonna slide that in. Now cooking times are gonna vary depending on the thickness of your chicken. So mine's a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna set my timer right now for about, let's say 17 minutes and we'll see what happens. So timer, 17, get that going. All right, and now we're gonna set this stuff aside and we are going to make a quick little dessert. So I, growing up with me, my mom, is a retired pediatrician. So when I was little, dessert was, you can have an apple or peaches with cottage cheese in it. I kind of am still traumatized from that sometimes. So my kids, now when we're done eating, especially the 13, a 13 year old boy, he's, he'll say, I'm full, can I be excused? What's for dessert? So there always has to be a dessert. And I really pushed back on this for a while because I'm like, you don't need a dessert, we're gonna be healthy. but then they just kind of, I don't know, eat everything else. So I try to create a dessert that's a little more healthy. So what I'm gonna make right now, and it works well with this meal because we don't have to bake this. So this is a no-bake oatmeal chocolate chip, um, no-bake cookie, if you will. So I've got one and two-thirds cups of oatmeal and some salt in here, and it's just quick rolled oats. And then I've got half a cup of softened peanut butter. Now I've chosen to use, I just use peanut butter. You can use almond butter, cashew butter. If you have nut allergies, there's um, tahini. You can, there's so many different things. So whatever works for you, I just really like the peanut butter side of things. So you just want to soften this. This was about 60 seconds plus like, I think I stirred it and then did like 20 more just in the microwave. So just to get this in here, then you add, one third of a cup of honey. Now you can use honey, you can use 100% pure maple syrup, not the store-bought kind. Um, you wanna just to maintain kind of the healthy sugars in this, you wanna make sure that you're getting the real kind. Um, so you can use honey, pure maple syrup, you can use agave, whatever you would like. And then about three tablespoons of the milk of your choice. I've chosen to use vanilla almond milk unsweetened vanilla almond milk. It's very low in calories and it just gives a little bit more liquid to this so that we can kind of get everything mixed together. And then we're just mixing. Um, I recommend mixing slowly because the dried oats, if you dive right in here, will fling everywhere. So this is gonna be pretty thick. If it's too thick, you can add a little bit more milk. You can, um, you know, depending, you know, if your measurement of your oats wasn't exact, you might need just a little bit more milk, something like that. But you wanna get it to where it's kind of looking like this, pretty basic. Now, for me, no dessert is complete without chocolate. That's just an opinion. So you could stop it right here and go ahead and dole them out. But what I've opted to do is I've got just under a half a cup of mini chocolate chips and I use the real teensy, teensy beans kind, um, because the big ones for me, I don't care to bite into hard, cold chocolate. And since we're not baking these, we're just going to chill them. The little ones tend to spread through a little bit better so that you don't get that big crunch of chocolate. And again, if that's something that you like, use chocolate chips. You can use dark chocolate. These are semi-sweet, um, mostly because they're the only <laughs> Semi-sweet was the only flavor I could find for in mini. I'm sure if we look online, you could probably find it at Amazon. Um, but so you stir these in and with the mini chocolate chips, it just, there's just a little bit of chocolate in there. So we just get those pretty much stirred through because you do want, I, mean, I want chocolate in every bite because that's my favorite. So then, and I found you can chill these on parchment lined plate 
or a parchment lined cookie sheet. But one thing that I found is that it's much easier um, to do, to give them out if you use cupcake tins. So I just put the cupcake liners in the cupcake tins because these cookies do tend to be a little sticky. So if you grab them in an individual cookie, you know, like a cupcake liner, less peanut butter on your hands. And for my house, that means less peanut butter on my microwave, less peanut butter on my refrigerator, because there's just, I don't know, something tactile that people tend to not notice if there's stuff on their hands. So what I'm going to use is this, God's gift to cooking and my mother's gift to me this Christmas. Thank you, mom. So you just take this great little cookie scoop, best invention ever. And you're just gonna come in here, get a little scoop, plop it right, just falls right out, right into the muffin tins. Now, depending on how exact you can keep it in, you can get a little extra, you know, make it a little bit bigger. So depending on how you do that, you could get anywhere, honestly, from a dozen to almost 20 of these. So I'm just gonna keep going. There's eight. And these are, um, they're delicious. And with stuff like this, you can add flaxseed, you can add um, hemp seed for like extra fiber. You can add protein powder. I, so there's a dozen. I think my next time trying these, I, like I said, I'm a chocoholic. So I was thinking about adding um, chocolate protein powder because that would up the chocolate factor and, you know, make it more nutritious, which then you could eat these for breakfast. So, which with the oatmeal and stuff in them in there, you probably could anyway. So there's four or five. So I got this one, just a little, I'm just gonna put this in with somebody else. So there, so I got 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I got 17. So right in there between 12 and 20, it just depends. So what I'm gonna do now, while we move on to getting some of our, the rest of our dinner together, is I'm just gonna put these in the fridge. Now, these are big pans to have in the fridge, so I did have to move stuff around. If that's not something you can do, you could, like I said, put them on a plate and put them in the fridge. If it's cold out and you live in Buffalo like I do, you could probably just put them in your garage and they'll be fine. Um, so it's just kind of depending. So I'm just gonna take these and I'm gonna pop them in the refrigerator back here. And then while they are chilling, we're gonna get into our side dishes. Now, I am the kind of person, if I'm making chicken for dinner, I'm good with just chicken. Not a problem, I can have some salad and call it a day. But my 13 year old, he's so funny. Whenever he asks what's for dinner, I'll tell him like chicken or burgers. He follows up with, what are the sides? So we always have to have sides. That's something that I've learned. Um, I met him when he was three, so he's grown up. He's always been like that. So he wants his sides. So we're going to do our sides and we're also going to create our honey sriracha sauce. And our chicken still in the oven. It's got about nine minutes left. So we're doing great. This is a really quickly put together meal. So before we get into the sides, let's go ahead and finish our honey sriracha sauce. So what I have in here is a third of a cup of honey, a two tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of sriracha sauce. Now the sriracha, the original recipe when I found this and kind of started tweaking it, it called for a tablespoon of sriracha sauce. That almost killed us. So we do a teaspoon, you can do more or less to your taste. And then there's three cloves of garlic. Now again, this is, where you go? This is the garlic that I use. A half a teaspoon of this is one clove of garlic and it's right on the directions. So I just pop that in there just to make it easy. Um, and then we're gonna bring this to a simmer. So I'm going to turn on, I always have to double check that I turn on the correct, the correct uh, burner. I don't know if anybody else has ever done the wrong one, but yeah, that would be me. So we're just going to let this get going and let it come to a simmer. So while we're waiting for that, and what I have here to stir with, I've got these silicone um, kitchen utensils and they're a little bit smaller, 
but they can sit here and even if even though this is a hot pan they're not going to melt and have have you ever had that line across the back of your spoons so these are wonderful um again i think i got these from my mom for christmas so very very helpful all right so we've got the sauce going our chicken is cooking our dessert is chilling so now we're going to get into our sides we're just going to do pretty basic sides because this chicken gets into more of an asian um, you know, soy and sriracha, that kind of thing. I tend to go with rice. Now, we could boil rice, um, we could get all that going, but because I'm doing so many things right now, I'm really going to opt for the easy side of rice, which is, and especially because I'm only doing it for two people tonight, if I was doing it for more, I would make a bigger batch. But this ready to serve rice is fantastic. It's like $1.65 at Aldi's, um, 90 seconds, and you've got some great brown rice. The other thing you can do that I also found at Aldi is they're not paying me, but I should write them a letter, is this 90 second ca rice cauliflower. So this is 25 calories. So it was two servings, it's 25 calories per serving, five grams of carbohydrates. So if you're wanting to stay super healthy, this is fantastic. And this is also 90 seconds, put it in your microwave, there you go, no problem. So I always keep these on hand just for times, you know, when you just aren't sure what's gonna go on. So when everything is done, because I find the biggest thing with meals for me is the timing at the end, because I want everything to be piping hot and ready to go. It doesn't always work that way, and you know what? It's okay. It's okay, things are fine. So the other side that I'm going to make, because we want to stay healthy, is I'm going to do some stir-fried vegetables. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on, also making sure that I turn on the correct burner and I'm gonna heat up this pan. So this is an amazing nonstick skillet um, from, <laughs> from my mother. My goodness, I need to write my mom a huge thank you note for all this stuff. So what I'm gonna do for vegetables is I'm going to just stir fry real quick some broccoli cauliflower and some carrots. Now again, from my mother, she always, when we were younger, made sure we had a colorful plate. So you don't just want the browns of rice and the browns of a baked chicken. You gotta have something colorful. So I do the green, the orange, and you can do any vegetables you want. You could put some onions in there for flavor, um, water chestnuts, green peppers, yellow peppers, whatever, floats your boat, zucchini, squash, whatever you can get your hands on. This is what I happen to have, and so here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and just spray a little of my olive oil spray into my pan, and then I am going to pop in my vegetables. Now, as they are cooking, as they get started, I'm just gonna do a little bit of pepper just for some flavor. And then I am also going to add garlic sea salt grinder. I love garlic and these grinders, um, you grind it, it's garlic and sea salt. So I just put a little bit of that in there. Let those go. Now we don't want to cook these down to mush, which has been my uh, kind of bad habit before. So you wanna just let them cook a little bit, let them get warmed up. We're gonna move over here to our sauce, which is simmering now. Now the sauce in and of itself is a little bit thin. So what we wanna do is we're gonna thicken it up with a cornstarch slurry. Now basically what that is, is you just take equal parts cornstarch and water. Now I'm starting off with just a tablespoon of each because you don't want to turn this into a solid. <laughs> so we just, so you, I've made this a couple minutes ago. The cornstarch does tend to settle. So you just gotta little, do a little whisk, whisk it back up a little bit. And then as you put it in, you're just gonna stir. So I'll bring this up here so you can see a little better. So I'm just stirring as I go. There we are. And we're just gonna kind of let this keep going, stir it, and let it thicken up. So as that keeps stirring, we're gonna move over here. 
can hear those vegetables. They're just kind of zhuzhing a little bit. Now, to give the vegetables a little more flavor, I like to use different sauces for stir frying. And a sauce that I've found that goes great with this is a sugar-free orange ginger ginger marinade. So this line, G Hughes, it's amazing. They have every conceivable kind of sauce. They have a balsamic vinaigrette salad dressing that I just love, and it's all sugar-free. Um, it's really good, and they have one that's like the Polynesian sauce, like they have a Chick-fil-A, not so good. So I just take, and again, I don't, depending on how many vegetables you use, would really depend on how much sauce that you use. So I just give it a good shake to get all the goodness in there. And then I do a little pour, just kind of over it a little, let's see here. Now, Anne Burrell says brown food is good food, meaning if you get a little char or a little sear, that's fantastic and that's what you want. So that's kind of what we're going for and that's what you hear. Now, just to get, because there's lots of steam coming off these, so just to get that and to use it to our advantage for cooking, I'm gonna put the lid on here just for a couple of minutes. Just for a couple of minutes and I'm gonna put this sauce back up here, get that stirring, get it thickened up. So right now, let's see where we're at. So the sauce is thickening, perfect. Veggies, mwah, they're gonna be done in about two minutes. And our timer is down, for our chicken, is down to one minute, which is good. Now, that does not mean that the chicken is done. So, something that I was famous for before I started cooking for other people was cooking chicken until it was uh, the hockey pucks, if you will. Because I was always so terrified of undercooking it because that's like how you kill people. So I would just cook it till it was like just rubber. So one thing that I got, and I bought this myself, is a digital meat thermometer. This has upped my game because in the summertime, when I grill even burgers, I would grill them to char because you can't have undercooked. Like I was so afraid of it. Um, not sure why, but that was me. So when our timer beeps in about 10 seconds, I'm gonna pull out the chicken and I'm going to check the temperature. You want the temperature to be um, 165. So that's what we're looking for. So there it is, we'll turn off the timer. Now when you open a 400 degree oven, <laughs> if you have bangs like me, it tends to like curl them because it's so hot. So I try to stand to the side and let it come out that way. So now we'll go in and grab this chicken, which is starting to look amazing. And again, depending on the thickness is going to depend on the doneness. So this one right now is going up. Mm. It's hitting about 130, about 126. Yep, that one's 138. They're getting close. I think if we pop these back in for just a couple more minutes, we're gonna be good to go. So that's what I'm going to do. So I set it for 17 minutes, so I have a little bit thicker chicken breast. So I'm gonna put these back in and make sure you set your timer again because I just set it for three more minutes um, because you don't wanna to get to doing something else and forget about it, then there. So, cornstarch slurry is working. Sauce is starting to thicken, smells amazing. I'm going to take the lid off of my vegetables because I don't want them to get too, um, too soggy. But if you look at these, oh my goodness, see it's colorful, it's got some char on it, it's got a little bit of color from the uh, marinade that we used. So good, so good. So I'm just gonna put these all the way down on low. Come back over here. This is thickening up. Awesome, and all this time, our, without even having to watch it, our dessert is totally cooking up. So everything is going according to plan. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to, now I'm gonna just do regular rice. I'm not gonna do the cauliflower rice tonight. Um, we've got cauliflower in here, which is fine. You can do as much cauliflower as you want. But when you do this, you take it, and again, the instructions are on the bag. I don't really need to teach you this, but you just pull it about halfway across, and then we're gonna pop it in the microwave for 90 seconds. Now I have this, this is a cover for things in your microwave that you put on it so they don't splatter everywhere, but I, I prop up my microwave rice in here, because <laughs> you can tell I do this a lot. So you prop it up in here, 90 seconds, and then that's going. So everything's moving as it should be. Ooh, our sauce is getting thick. I wish that they could figure out a way to make smell go through these videos because I am telling you what, mm, looks so good. So I'm gonna try if I can turn that. So that sauce is kind of a caramely color um, and it just smells so good. And it's thickening up. So if you look at this sauce, it's kind of, it's getting a little thicker. And the longer it sits with that cornstarch slurry in it, the thicker it will get. So don't worry about that. Um, so we've got that, turn that off, let that sit. These vegetables are perfection in a pan. So <clears throat> 35 seconds left on the rice. So I'm going to grab a plate, chicken, oh, 15 seconds. This is the best. You'd think I practiced. I did. So I'm going to grab a plate. Now in my perfect world, I put the rice, then the veggies, then the chicken, and then put the sauce over it. Um, my husband does not like that. He wants the rice, the veggies, the chicken, and then he'll put the sauce on specifically only what he wants the sauce on. Um, that is a trait he has passed on to the children, which is fine. So I generally um, don't do I kind of let people serve their, make their own trays or make their own plates. So we're gonna go ahead and poke this guy. Oh, it's going up. I love when this thermometer gets going and it hits 62. Yes, so that one's totally perfect. This one's a little thicker. Let's see what this one has going on. 51. Let's see, so this one's gonna have to go back in for a quick minute. Oh, as is this one, but the bonus is this one is ready to go. So if I can find, there they are, my tongs. What I am going to do, sorry, we're going to get a pair that have not touched raw chicken because that's bad. So I'm gonna grab this guy, put it on the plate. I'm gonna pop these back in. So we'll just let these go for another few minutes. And again, it's a hazard if you don't pay strict attention to the exact thickness of your chicken, um, which I try to, but I don't always do. So I'm just gonna set my timer for a couple more minutes and we will let that go. So then I'm going to scoop up, I'm just gonna show you just how beautiful this plate is because it is gorgeous. Get a little more cauliflower on here. So we've got that. Then I come over here because remember, while we were doing this, our rice was cooking, yay. So we will grab a spoon. Now again, if you want to be a little more fancy, you can take this rice, put it in a separate bowl and then dish it up, or you can just serve it from the bag. It's totally how where, where you are in your journey for that moment. So since I'm doing this, I'm just gonna put, apparently I'm gonna throw it all over, a little bit of rice on here. There we go. And then we've got our sauce. Now what I tend to do is I take the sauce just like this and I will just drizzle it like so on the chicken. And again, you can put as much or as little as you want. Um, my kids like to dip, they don't like it right on there. 
and that is totally their call. So then you have chicken, rice, stir fried veggies, and don't forget in the fridge, we have our no bake peanut butter cookies, which are not exactly pretty, but they're so good. And just because I know everything is delicious. Mm. Dessert first, you never know what's gonna happen. So there is the recipe, panko breaded chicken with a honey sriracha sauce, stir fried vegetables, rice, healthy-ish peanut butter oatmeal cookies. So good. All of these recipes will be posted with this video. Again, my name is Sherry Jablonski. I'm the owner and personal trainer for Better Way Fitness, LLC. Please let us know if you like this video and want more like it. Thank you so much for spending time with me and hope everybody has a wonderful day. Bye-bye.